Do you think AI will revolutionize our relationship with the animal kingdom or do you think it will hurt it? Do you think, you know, using AI to, outside of just pain management or pain, uh, taking care of pain mm -hmm. in animals, just overall, mm -hmm. do you think that uh, bringing AI into the, the space like yours mm -hmm. would help us interact better with animals? Absolutely. Um, because again, like the biggest challenge that humans have in interacting with horses is that, you know, we layer on our own biases. We layer on our own perspectives. Um, we make assumptions that have sometimes nothing to do with the horses. You know, we, we think that horses are like, you know, limping when they come out of the stall just so they can, you know, get out of, um, or, you know, they come out of a stall and they're sound and then you put saddle on and now they're limping and we just think that the horse is faking it. It's like, mm -hmm. no, that would probably be an indication of poor tack fit. Um, but a lot of people make these inaccurate assessments, you know, assumptions. So by being able to bring AI into it and um, help bring more awareness as far as what to look for, you know, when a horse's eye looks a certain way or when their facial expression is a certain way um, or, when, you know, when their body position is a certain way that this is indicating <clears throat> that they're either comfortable or in discomfort, then it's just going to help riders, especially the ones that genuinely like really care and want to, you know, do the very best for their horses. Um, it's just going to help them do a better job of being able to do that with confidence and give them peace of mind that, you know, they're, they're on the right track to make sure. Because, you know, at the end of the day, the horse can't tell us when they're in pain, but they also can't really tell us when they're feeling that great either. Mm -hmm. You know, other than, you know, we see a happy horse and they're running around in the pasture bucking and playing. We're like, well, that looks like a happy horse. Um, but, uh, you know, it also would give us confirmation that, you know, what we're doing with the horse is working for them too. Mm. It's pretty nice to hear. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to take it a step further. Mm -hmm. and this is going to sound weird. There's an article that was published in the Scientific American a few months ago that describes how artificial intelligence could finally let us talk with animals. Mm -hmm. Actually talk, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is oh, this feasible think, or, or fantasy? Yeah, no, I think that that's definitely feasible. And what? I mean, oh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. You know, okay. I, so, yeah, so I, I love technology and I love geeking out on it. And, you know, I could see this going in a direction where, you know, we could actually um, monitor the brain waves of what's going on with horses and be able to, you know, um, you know, have an even more informed conversation with them. Okay. <laughs> wow. Not that we're going to get Mr. Ed, you know, moving his lips and talking to us with yeah. a human voice, but, you know, we will definitely be able to um, take a lot of the, the mystery that's still in there in, in working mm. with horses out. Mm. Okay. Wow. So uh, let's have a, a discussion uh, beyond technology. Let's talk about uh, horse riding for, for fun or for sport. Mm hmm how expensive, how costly is it to, for, how costly is horse riding nowadays? Um, it could be anywhere from, you know, spending a couple of hundred dollars a month to, you know, with just being a recreational trail rider to many multiple thousands of dollars a month. You know, if you're training, paying a trainer and, you know, um, competing at a high level of, in performance of a sport. Is this something that, well, I know you already said just a hundred dollars a month, but how much value can you get out of that? for um if you really wanted to be a competitive horse rider for example mm -hmm. i mean how much value can you get out of hundred dollars a month would it be much more expensive than that oh yeah it, it's really i mean it's hard to come i mean sometimes just the shoes alone cost that much so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, it, so there's so it should be a lot more than 100 then mm -hmm. well i mean so if you have a recreational rider who is barefoot and they just ride in their pasture that ride in the you know an area that's close to them that you know is just local or they haul to you know the closest forest reserve mm -hmm. um it, it's really not going to cost very much a month for the the horse owner especially if they keep the horses on their own property yeah. it's not going to cost them that much you know and that, and that is just really for the recreation and the, just the joy of being with horses and enjoying nature um so that's kind of like the the like the most entry level of um expense to horse maintenance so, and enjoying so just get yourself some land off mm -hmm. off grid you know, put some horses on mm -hmm. it it's not that expensive well in texas no, <laughs> the land's gotten quite expensive yeah. actually most places um but as far as managing horses you know if you already have your own property um and your own facilities then cost you know the cost of 
taking care of horses goes way, way down. Okay. Okay. It's good to know. Mm -hmm. Just for anyone who's curious about, mm -hmm. you know, getting into it and, you know, going yep. and getting into uh, horse riding or just taking care of horses or living with horses, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, on a lighter note, there's a popular trend on social media. Uh, and it's a fascination with farriers mm -hmm. trimming horse, horses' hooves. Uh, but what do you think about that? Do you think it's a positive thing? or Because these it's videos tend to be therapeutic sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I think it's a very good thing um, because it's, it's, I see it as more as just an educational tool for, so that the more people get used to seeing something like that and, you know, can recognize a job well done, then they, you know, can also recognize when, when you know, something's not correct. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Uh, any dangers to it? You know, you talked about frivolous fun earlier mm -hmm. on. Any dangers to that? Do you think you'd invite any of that type of stuff? Well, if somebody who doesn't know the first thing about trimming horses and they pick up a, you know, a set of n nippers, well, hoof trimmers, um, and they think that they're going to just start nipping away at their horse's feet and maintain it on their own, that can be quite dangerous because they can make their horse very sore and lame them very, very badly, very quickly with yeah. not having any education. So, yeah. Oh, wait, it, it, you know, I'm curious. This might be a good time to just define some horse terms. You want to, you want to. Absolutely. <laughs> you want to give us some terms sure. and define them? Um, so maybe we'll, explain what I just said. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You said, uh, well, you, what did you, you, you nippers? Nippers. Yes. What's that? So think of them as really big nail clippers for, for horses. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of obvious, <laughs> neepers. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so they look like a pair of pliers uh, with sharpened edges, and you know, a horse a farrier will go around the horse's foot and just cut off the excess uh, fo um, excess growth on the horse's foot. Yeah. Gait. Mm -hmm. Well, how does that? What is that in terms of in terms of horses? A, a gait, as in like the, G A I T. The way, yeah, uh, as in the way that the horse moves. So the the gait is referred to um, as far as just the movement of the horse, and then they have different types of speed. So there's the walk, there's the trot, um, then there's a slow lope or run, uh, and then a full gallop. Hmm. Okay. We've already defined a uh, what a foal is. What would you call a male horse? Stallions. Stallions. Well, so there's stallions that are fully intact, and then the, you have geldings that once were stallions, but they've been neutered kind of like a male dog. Mm. What do you call a female horse? Mares. Mares. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Uh, this is all very interesting. I wish <laughs> I... Uh, I think that, that covers it. Mm -hmm. So we got foals, we got stallions, we got mares. We've defined limbness. We defined some of our terms. That, sh that should pretty much cover it if you're trying to get into... Uh, you're trying to get into uh, horse riding and taking care of horses, right? Mm -hmm.